All right, so kettlebell CNC vlog. Um, one thing I wanted to mention as I get into this uh, polypropylene sorting is um, when you're looking at polypropylene, a lot of times you'll one of the things I was looking at was like the, the plastic should be kind of crinkly or stiff uh, as well as shiny and it should fail the tear test. Um, I've got a piece of plastic here. It's quite crinkly. It's shiny and polished. It fails the tear test. Um, but it has on here, and this is something, this is a, a caution warning. Uh, you got to be real careful of this. This has a code 3 on it. And a code 3 um, is not polypropylene. So it's, it, it's very easy to get confused and careful. But you can, one thing you can notice is it's a lot more crinkly than the other stuff that I've been showing as polypropylene. Um, so the warning here is that code 3 is... Um, uh, PVC, it's polyvinyl chloride, and if you melt polyvinyl chloride, and especially if you melt it and you get the fumes in your face, the fumes of this stuff, when you melt it, will kill you, um, or at least cause severe damage. So you do not want to mess with no, Code 3, um, unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, so I'm taking Code 3 and I have to throw it away. I'd like to put it somewhere else, but there's no place else that I can really put it. Um, I don't really, I can't really put it in the Walmart recycle. So this is going to have to go in the garbage. Um, just FYI, watch out for code three. Uh, specifically, the, one of the ways you can kind of know that this is going to be code three is typically polyvinyl chloride wrap like this will usually be uh, around potted plants. You all usually have this you know, wrapped around the potted plant. So just be aware of that. Those are usually PVC plastic, and you really can't do much with that unless you really know what you're doing. So um, just kind of watch out for that, and that, that'll be the sort of my intro for this uh, polyvinyl, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, polypropylene, and I actually get into a little bit of PET, so you'll see me do that. All right, we'll talk to you later. Calabal CNC Vlog. Hey guys, Cyrils, welcome. So. Um, one thing I discovered when I was working through all this polypropylene and sorting it out was I found a little piece here um, that says, now you probably can't see it very well because the autofocus isn't working on this camera, but it says uh, code 01 PET in there. Um, I didn't actually, I saw that this was PET so I threw it in with the PET, but I noticed some interesting properties about this. First of all, um, it's kind of, it's quite flexible. Um, it kind of crinkles a little bit like um, polypropylene, um, and it fails the tear test or the stretch test, also like polypropylene. Um, but it is a little bit more bendable and flexible without being quite so crinkly and stiff. Uh, and it of course is polished like polypropylene. It's shiny and waxy and um, like that. But it says PET on there, um, so. I know that this is PET. I don't know if they've like put some sort of um, uh, like a uh, I don't know what you would call that um, some sort of uh, uh, plasticizer or polymerizer or something they've uh, an additive they've mixed to to make it like that instead of being um, quite stiff like real PET would normally be. Real PET would normally be you know water bottles would be quite like that. So maybe this is just a thinner version or they've added some um, some plasticizer or uh, a monomer or something in there to, to make it like that. I don't know. But I could see where it kind of would be. Um, but anyways, that's some interesting properties to, to kind of consider. Um, especially when going over this this uh, polypropylene because obviously the failing of the tear test uh, being stiff and quite you know crinkly like that would normally be attributed to polypropylene or also to PET. I mean PET would be very, very similar. So I found some interesting properties here is it's not quite as stiff and uh, crinkly. Um, so I'm just kind of set those aside and obviously this, it doesn't say on here what this is, but I'm pretty sure this is polypropylene. Um, I'm pretty sure that's not PET. It's, it's very difficult now, now that I'm thinking about it, to tell the difference. But I think the difference, the main difference, is going to be 
um, how crinkly it is. So uh, this is quite crinkly, so I think that's polypropylene. This is this is actually a little bit softer. This could actually be PET. I'd like to think that this is polypropylene, but it fails the tear test. It's not quite as stiff or crinkly. It is still waxy, um, but it's, I don't know, it just feels like that's going to be PET. Um, I'm, I'm kind of feeling that. It's, uh, this is a little bit softer, smoother, waxier, polish, more polished. I don't know, maybe that's a really bad way to tell, but I just get the sense that this is actually PET plastic. Um, so I'll keep that with that one. These are most likely polypropylene. They're a little bit stiffer, a little bit more crinkly. Interesting. Same. Okay, that's poly probably polypropylene. Most of this probably is polypropylene. Propylene, PP, polypropylene, polypropylene. This is all polypropylene. I actually need to sort this by color, so I probably should start to do that. These are mostly, well, those are yellowish, yellowish white. So I need to start sorting these by color. Yellowish white, clear. Clear polypropylene red, mostly reds. I guess that would be more of like a purple. So I'm going to have to separate this and put this with whites and that with purples. Clear. I'll have little bags here. I'm going to start putting them in. But I wanted to get down to this guy right here. Which has that same consistency. It's a little bit more pliable. Um, still fails the tear test. I'm thinking this is probably PET. Just like the other ones. It's not quite as stiff and, and uh, um, uh, crinkly as the polypropylene. So that is the interesting takeaway. Um, PET. A little bit softer. Polypropylene. A little bit stiffer from a plastic identification standpoint. So that is interesting. That is, that's kind of what I'm going to go from going forward. Um, and I'll just have to, I wasn't expecting to have to have uh, sort by PET versus polypropylene, uh, but I can see that uh, there is a need to do that. So, um, and probably not going to have much PET. Uh, probably most of it's going to be polypropylene. And I'll have to use that going through. I think I had a couple, uh, maybe a couple, three, four more bags of stuff that um, didn't get properly identified, or like I said, I didn't know what I was doing when I was when I was actually going through it. But now that I've identified um, kind of these differences, uh, and I can kind of see a little bit better, uh, I think I have a path forward. So we're going to go with that, and I'm going to go ahead and get through this and uh, wrap it up. Ha ha! Yeah, come on supposed to laugh at that joke. Really? Come on. Okay, yeah, I know it was kind of a lame joke. All right. I right, see you later, guys. Bye.